Hi there. We're continuing our progress through the book of Psalms in Hebrew, Tehillim, and today we're in Psalm 2, uh, in Hebrew called Tehillim Bet, the letter Bet standing for the number 2. Um, some authorities suggest that this may be a continuation of Psalm 1, uh, and some ancient authorities, some Talmudic authorities, rabbinical authorities, partly because Psalm 1 begins with the word Ashrei, meaning satisfied, happy, blessed, and Psalm 2 finishes with Ashrei, ha blessed, happy, is everyone who takes refuge in him. Um, that's just one approach to this. What we can be sure of is that Psalm 2 has a messianic quality to it. And again, Talmudic and rabbinical writers link this psalm to a coming messianic age, a coming age of the Messiah, because it says that the kings of the earth have rebelled against God and against his Mashiach, against his anointed one. And this seems to <coughs> envisage uh, a, a rising up of the nations to throw off the reign of God. Now we're familiar in scripture with a constant theme of the nations rebelling against God, going right back to the story of Babel, of Babel, the Tower of Babel, in the early part of the scriptures. And again and again we see the kings coming against God and trying to uh, fight against him. Interestingly, this psalm uh, is invoked in Acts chapter 4, when the Church of Jesus is gathered together and they are praying for power and boldness against the work of Herod and Pontius Pilate who have crucified Jesus. And this, they, 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 they speak the first words of this psalm. Look, the nations have gathered together and they've tried to cast off the rule of God. And so this is invoked in the New Testament. In fact, it's invoked in several places in the New Testament connected with Jesus. And therefore, um, followers of Jesus have often connected this psalm with the Messiah, with Jesus himself. But the psalm is basically saying, why have the rulers of earth decided to set themselves against God? Uh, because actually God sits in the heavens and he laughs. Uh, here is a picture of a God who laughs. Laughter is something that is in the nature of God. Uh, it's the fact that he calls one of his patriarchs Yitzhak, he will laugh. Laughter is not something foreign to God, but here God is laughing in ridicule. He's holding these kings in ridicule because as though they can break off <clears throat> the connection of the earth with its maker and with its owner God. Um, and God actually says he's going to judge the nations. He's going to come in and he's going to bring these uh, human powers to nothing. It's something that we really need to be aware of when we think of human political power, particularly human political power that sees itself as being sovereign over against God. God says there is no sovereign power apart from me. And he urges at the end of the psalm, there's an urging uh, to uh, to make peace with God, to come to terms with God, to live in fear of God, because the fear of God is so important. Fear of God is a key to wise living. And at the end, the last verse, verse 12, uh, traditionally it's been translated, kiss the son, and many Protestant translations have taken this to be, Jesus is the son, and therefore make peace with the son before he comes and judges you. But many other translations uh, take the word bar in the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and they want to make it something to do with purity and discipline. So it's saying embrace purity, embrace discipline before God comes and judges you. So it's really a psalm that is calling for uh, the wayward governments, the wayward principalities, the wayward powers of earth to submit to God because God is the one who ultimately is the source of all power and rule, particularly through his Mashiach, particularly through his Messiah, who he says, I have sired you, I have begotten you, Yaladti, I have begotten you. And uh, this is an important word in the sense of, again, as believers in Jesus, we see that God himself has uh, has given birth to a son in Jesus, in Messiah. Let's today then be sure and submit to this wonderful God who is the ruler of all things. Whatever men may say, whatever men decide, God is the ruler of all things and he will bring all things into the authority and into the power of Jesus. Have a very good day.